Now where could my pipe be? I was 18, 18 years old. I saw for the first time. Just say he is John, a plain man. And then there is a cat. This is the nature of the world. When I see the politics, the truth, the, the satellites of space, and the people who put them there, you can look at everything as a man and a cat. Harmony and a an So the strip I saw about this man, John, and the cat, Garfield, you see. Yes. It is about everything. This little comic is, oh, lo and behold, not so little anymore. So yes, when I was 18, I saw this comic, and it hit me all at once, it's, it's power. I clipped it, and every day I looked at it, and I said, okay, let me look at this here. What is this doing to me? Why is this so powerful? John R. <laughs> Crossed, comfortable in his home, and he reads his newspaper. He reads the world, perhaps. And then he extends his fingers lightly, delicately, taps his fingers on an end table, and feels for something. Suddenly, it is there, and it overpowers you. Cat is smoking a pipe. It is the man's pipe. It's John's pipe. It's a cat. This cat, Garfield, is smoking the pipe. From afar and from someplace near, but not clear. Near, but not clear. The man calls out. John calls out. Let's take a step back. Let us examine this from all sides. When I first came across this comic strip, I was at my father's house. The newspaper had arrived and I picked it up and brought it inside. I organized his sections for him and then, yes, the comic strip section fell out from somewhere in the middle, landed on the kitchen floor. I picked up the paper pages and saw up somewhere near the top of this strip. Just like John Hunt was wearing an awkward shirt. So I thought, oh.
saw more. I spotted the tiny copyright mark in the upper left corner. Copyright 1978 to... What is this? Copyright belongs to a Pause Incorporated. I used the local library and mail services to track down the information I was looking for. Jim Davis, a cartoonist, created a comic strip about a cat and a man. Letters to Paws Incorporated, long letters, pages upon pages, asking if Mr. Jim Davis could somehow publish just the one comic over and over again. It would be meditative. The strength of it. Could you imagine? But no response. The strips lost their power. Eventually, I stopped reading. single time I can look at the long and colors and shapes that make up the trees. I see perfection. I find perfection in many things. Some things I would say. Some things are perfect. This is one of them. I can look at the tough hair on John Arbor's head. Just a perfect shape. Purple pipe in Garfield's mouth. Jim Davis. After copious research, and yes, of course, now we have to do that. Jim Davis, he used his life experiences to influence his comic. Like I mentioned before, the limiters even have the weight of the post. We have to wonder about the man who was able to even just once create the perfect form, a literal, flawless execution of brilliance. Just as an award, there's a spiritual element to work. I've seen my share of bad times, and I have something. Well, it's just emotions and neurons and all that. Harmony like a continuous looping and everlasting harmony. Lavender chair, the brown end table, the salmon colored wall, the forest green carpet, garlic. I'm firmly between his jowls. His tail curls around. It's an order too, because I. Okay, stay with me. I've done this experiment several times. times.
18 years old. I saw it for the first time in my life. Changed who I am. Made me who I am. Enlightened me. This trip, Garfield. The comic strippers knew no more than maybe a month and a half since inception, since since coming into existence. First, let us just say he is John, a plain man. Then there is a cat, Garfield. This is the nature of the world. When I see them, the future, the satellites in space, the people who put them there, they look at everything as a man and a cat. Harmony and a man. So this strip I saw, this man, John, and the cat, Garfield, you see, yes.
sent letters to Paws Incorporated, long letters, pages upon pages, asking if Mr. Jim Davis could somehow publish just the one comic over and over again. It would be meditative. The strength. Jim Davis. After copious research and internet, this information is all readily available, but Jim Davis used his life experiences to influence his comedy. Like I mentioned before, none of them seem to have the way of the You have to wonder about the man who is able to hear just once create the perfect form of literal flawless execution of art. Brilliance. Just as I've seen my share of bad times, and when you have something, well, it's just emotions and neurons in your brain, but something tells you that it's the truth, the truth's radiant light. I feel the cat. Neurons in my brain, this is harmonizing. John and Garfield, this truly harmony. Continuous, looping, everlasting harmony. Lavender chair, the brown end table, the sand colored wall, the forest green carpet, and Garfield's hunch perched, perhaps with the pipe stuck firmly between his jowls. His tail curls around. His hair shakes too. blobs with magazine cutouts of other things. Replace John Arbuckle with a car parked in a driveway sideways. Cut that out of a magazine. Place him there in the second pack. Food processor. Okay. And then we put a picture of the planet in the third panel over Garfield. These are universal proportions. I don't know how best to explain why it works. I have studied the pipe strip and analyzed John and Garfield's Portions against several universal constants. The pi, the golden ratio, the Feigenbaum constants, and so on. It's surprising. It's scary. There's a lot. You can take just tiny pieces of the pipe, for instance. Take John's elbow from the second panel. Take that and project it back over John's entire shape in the second panel, and you'll see a near perfect Fibonacci sequence of It's amazing. It makes you wonder if you're in the presence of a deity, if there is some larger hand at all. No doubt in my mind that Jim Davis is a smart man. Davis is capable of He's one. But this is so far beyond that, I think you might see that this work of art is revered and respected in years to come. Jim Davis is possibly a new master. Jim Davis is a modern-day Socrates. Da Vinci. It's in both striking visual beauty and classical, daring, unheard of intellect. He combines these things with profoundly simple expressions. <laughs> this
This strip is his masterpiece. The pipe strip is his masterpiece. stick up, signifying a peak readiness. It's as if he could at any moment pounce. He is, after all, the greatest will of ever be sent for a great jungle cats and cats. I see the power of the world. Powerful haunches indeed. Just saying this now. for the entire strip itself. All the power dynamics, the struggle for superiority, right? Who has the pipe? Where is the pipe? All of that is drawn, built, layered in the Garfields I You can see it in the curl of his tail. scope. I'm just amazed that after 33 years of reading and analyzing the same dimensions of his testament. For six years I've been to the We can't smoke. This is a metaphysical question. of a homicide case has to look at every angle. So I'm always taking a <laughs> I focus on every minutia, every detail of the story. John Arbuckle's clothing. I have replicas. I'm an expert in those things. So you see, the smoking thing was a hang-up for me. What was the statement here? Until... This is key. This is the breakthrough. The pipe is not a pipe, really. Obviously, there is symbolism at work here. I saw that from the beginning, and I looked at the literal aspects of the strip to gain insight into the metaphors of play. I looked at what's been printing books for 18 months in the late 1980s. I was learning the literal cruelty of form and gesture. Foreign trans. 
isolation, a bastard decision of the term smoking rat. But the phrase was confused by secret documents went back and forth between China and America. These documents are still Let's call him Timothy. Yeah. Yes, it's a big name for his protection. Timothy worked for Philip Morris for 16 years, and he had seen the documents. When he told me, it was an aha moment. He said, but how? How did this cartoonist, Jim Davis, know about this obscure term from the mid-70s used exclusively by a piece of the Connect the dots by noting Jim Davis' childhood experiences on the farm. He must have seen something. Timothy went on to tell me there was one particular smoking cat, a boy. Yes, Indiana. A boy named Ernie Barguckle, who became a thorn inside of the tobacco companies for a couple of years. He did more than tattle to his parents. He and his family took legal action. And they eventually received a huge settlement payout. But that name is too similar. Ernie Barger. Here is something from 1981 that I wrote in thinking about the implications of this trip. This is just an excerpt here. There's more before and after, but this part is the essence to me. If a comic about a cat smoking a pipe is the only thing in the universe, then maybe this is the strongest evidence for that. your pipe. You've been blind, you understand this? The cat has your pipe. You can't fully immerse yourself. You don't have the light. You don't have the radiance, the radical light, the radically radiant light of truth and truth's belonging love and nature of light and loving truthful radiance. So don't be bold and make bold statements. I know of you. The cat has your pipe. is reading. It's an exercise in recursion. It's like a vortex opens up. It's like you hold two mirrors up to each other. One is reality and the other is a cartoon strip. Let's see. Oh yes. I must bring this up because I think surely Jim Davis is against me. on 
women for the desire of men. This practice was incredibly painful. And Cover this hidden order is bliss like a own existence. The center panel seems to issue again. This harsh of so many of the great religious works of art. We're talking about the types driven in relation to religion. It's, it's interesting to assign the roles of God and anti-God, as many know be the devil. Or on a much larger scale, simply the forces of good and evil. Garfield, the meat cat, evil and malicious. Who's the devil placed in life? Forms of John. John on the left is still innocent, still draped in the delight of the lack of knowledge. He is the human in the Garden of Eden. He feels for his pipe, but he has yet to eat from the tree. And Garfield, the sinister serpent. And notice, notice how Jim Davis has framed this. The center John. the struggle. It is this knowledge of the truth, the knowledge of the existence of evil. Stunning, great struggle, a struggle that transcends time.
horrible cat. Do not be seduced by the cat in the pipe. This is his very nature. So you see this, and you want to say, John Arbuckle, come now. You are lying to yourself. You are lying to yourself and to all of us if you pretend to have not any idea where your pipe has gone. Perhaps you think you left it somewhere else, but <laughs> you're not so forgetful. You are lying to yourself. Lying to yourself, John Buckle. You know that Garfield has to help you. She does.
breathe in, that is the transition from the second panel of life to the third panel of life. It is a simple story structure, the passage from the second act to the third. The twilight flickers. John gives in to his suspicions. He knows the truth. He's always been the truth. He yells out, Garfield! 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 And it's like pressure from a steam valve being released. The buildup is unbearable and then... Singh Sahib, I pushed and pushed, determined to find myself. And then a miracle happened. Upon retrieving my morning paper to clip the Garfield comic, I noticed a young girl selling lemonade two houses down. She sat on the stand, and she had no customers in sight. So I approached her and saw that she was coloring. I looked at her drawing. Three rectangular boxes. My spiritual advisor's name is Avram Dav Singh Sahib. Coincidence, surely, but nonetheless, I spent the next 16 hours pouring into my Clip Garfield comics, looking for the strip this young girl had been coloring. I couldn't find it. And I eventually fell asleep right on my kitchen table. The next morning, I retrieved my paper again and I clipped the Garfield comic. <laughs> I 
grid stand was a for sale sign. They I rushed back to my house to call Otto. I was informed that he knew the way as well. I reeled for several hours and it all came to for me. It was meant to be. It, it was meant to be this way. Jim Davis. John. Garfield. It was always meant to be this way. They moved to the forefront. Everything else fades away. Everything else. Beautiful miracle. And it's July 1978, the day I first saw the pipe strip. The first day of my life. as I was, I, I managed to take in her response. She said, yes, a cat in this room would have a hard time differentiating a wall from the floor. Imagine that the cat's known spatial you have the things of a cat rage for Now she informed me this is exactly common knowledge of the cat is. But a seasoned cat or someone particularly perceptive will have picked up on it. So what's incredible here is not only is Garfield's behavior symbolic of the devil and all the evil constructs in the world, but, 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 but also, it's rooted in science of scientific fact. Look at that. You cannot spell fact without a cat. Just a little joke. Just some word. Getting back on track. And you can't spell track without a cat. Okay. I digress. It is established here that Garfield is in a rage, an ultimate rage of fury and hatred caused by color weakness. We know the what, we know the why, but let us examine the how. The how of his rage is particularly interesting. We've looked at his posture and the power of control, statues, etc., etc., composed rage. It's peculiar, and I've talked to a number of psychologists and psychiatrists, and even a couple of anger management therapists about this concept. Could we have the same kind of behavior as a human? Is Garfield representative of something more specific than just chaos and rage? Deciphering this is going to take some time to be sure. The psychologist pointed to a phenomenon in humans. Yes, I believe one of the anger management counselors brought it up as well. The idea that people oftentimes will bottle their rage. Garfield the cat here. Well, he could be bottling his anger inside, shutting it deep into his cat gut to ignore and deal with it later time. No, it's not exactly right. Garfield has already had it. He's already stolen the pipe. He's smoking. He's already dealt with his anger. He's already lashed out, so psychologically, what is going on here? What is this cat doing, and how does it impact his owner, John Arbor? He's acting on his anger. Is this passive anger or passive? Passive. It is passive because if Garfield...
Garfield has a problem with John specifically, he's choosing a passive way of dealing with that problem. He's not confronted John, he's not John. Entire drama in just three panels, people. But let's not be remiss on this humor of the situation. The absurdity of it all. For certainly there is a reason for visual shorthand for crime has analyzed comedy and tragedy complement each other well together to create drama. Tension the height of humanity. The art floats back to us. Never, I presume. I certainly never have. The Greek muse Thalia's presence is strong in this world. Comedy, it is comedy! If you look at the structure again, you'll see this perfect form of thirds works magically for the transmission. Yes, yes, a joke! The joke is as old as time. Even the caveman had the jokes. And the joke here is that John has lost his pipe. idea because it is, it is so omnipresent, yes. You could, and yes, I have done this on more than one occasion. You could print this comic strip on a giant piece of paper. The dimensions would be something like 34 inches by 11 inches. Now tape the ends together, the comic facing inward. Stick your head in the middle. Start at the first half. Feels for something to learn. The second panel, he sent some newspaper down. Something is not right. Where my type is. And the payoff. The third panel. The guardian has John's pipe and he's smoking it. But ha ha ha! He puts a loop around your head. You see, but once again, John is in the seat reading the And so on, and so on. You could literally read the comic strip for eternity. I spent many a relaxing Sunday afternoon reading the strip over and over. I'm reminded of the Portuguese death carvings, which always begin and end with the same scrawled image. So this idea of repetition, at the beginning being the end, at the end being the beginning, is it's an ageless tradition. see this Garfield comic and shrug with no real reaction. But I will say that I believe everyone in the world should see it. At the very least, see it. You should all see it. Read it. Spend some time with it. Spend an hour with it. What's an hour?
If you give this strip a chance. Similar to the Garfield comic in a way. Something I can't find. It. Yes, it probably happens billions of times a day around his hands on his hips. Then he scratched his head. He said aloud. Now where could my pipe bench be? Well this I leaped off the bench. Sandwich still in hand, and I rushed over. I shouted, What was that you said? He looked at me and said, What? I can't find my pipe wrench. And I said, No, no, no. Say it like how you just said it. He scratched his head and repeated, Where did my pipe I slapped him on the back and said, Try me! Common love for Jim Davis and his characters, his writings, humor, drama, Garfield embodies the bewilderment of the human's life in his job. One of the telltale signs that informs John's philosophical standpoint is approach. What style of thinking is this? John is depicted as being grounded in the material world. The world of things he is In some sense, even his cat Garfield is an object to him. The first ideology that comes to mind when thinking of objects in the tangible world is pragmatism. Is John Arnold a pragmatist? His beliefs stem from a useful, coherent view of his environment. A sort of cause and effect understanding of his world helps him. exhibits an erratic, unpredictable mix of philosophical behaviors. At times he is born, delusional, an idealist, an almost slap-happy version of Don Quixote. In other moments he is rooted nearly to the point of being obsessive, somewhat like a structuralist. Certainly has streaks of activity that might classify him as a skeptic. But isn't there some universal truth in this approach? How can any one man, how can 
John Arbor. Just one thing. <laughs> An amalgamation of ideas and emotions, conducts and functions, thoughts and feelings. John Arbor. can be kind and thoughtful. You just have to find that rare strip. Speaking philosophically about the entire Garfield franchise, it's a tragic act of fiction. Its bold lines and bright colors are merely a facade, a red herring on the line. This cartoon is not a cartoon at all. It is not caricature. It is not caricature despite a caricature as its original style and tone. my pipe be. This is, this is where cognition and the power and function of the mind take over. It's a pleasure to believe the body is just a shell for John Arnold. Yes, he can use his physical body to read his paper. This is like his inputs of touch, sight, hearing, etc. These senses are the triggers of the mind. As we see here, the mind is something greater. It is the Isn't that what Mr. Jim Davis himself has achieved? Will he live forever? The universe will continue to spread and spread out. Entropy will turn a chaotic infinity into a homogenous controlled system. This will take billions of years, and in that time, humans will push technology to heights we can't imagine. We'll explore and inhabit space, and occupy more and more of the universe, just as time allowed our ancestors to multiply in numbers and populate more and more of the Earth. And as the specific people come and go, their physical bodies will be more and more. Thoughts will be Jim Davis's comments, this glorious garden of recorded ideas, will still be here. Even when the Earth is no longer Under my words, 
forever? Will it live forever outside of these physical husks of ours? Our bodies? may not be what we think. Life begins to fly. The heart, eyes, blood eyes. Real children's children's children can access the wealth of ideas.